Hello, this is Susan Sun Nanamaker with SunsForFuture.net. I'm here with my team from MIT. Tell us, as a matter of fact, we actually talked to him uh, right before the race, and uh, but I think we have a little bit more time now. So, what's your name first? My name is Alex Rambula. I'm with the MIT team. And was it an exhausting race? <laughs> it was pretty tiring. It was uh, a lot more exciting than last year. There are certainly a lot of uh, things that we had to deal with that we didn't have to deal with two years ago. Like uh, wind and fire. <laughs> the wind, fire, smoke, rain, everything that nature could throw at us, we had to deal with. Well, I, I think it's really putting it through the test, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. And uh, compared to two years ago, we've come through a long way since then. I'm pretty proud of the team through overcoming the challenges. Um, and we're looking forward to coming back in two years with a new car. Very good. What have you learned from the experience? I mean, uh, was it the, uh, the wind or the uh, surface or how the driving condition or uh, anything you like I to share? I learned that no matter how prepared you're going to be, there's always going to be curveballs thrown at you. Um, and just, you know, the World Solar Challenge is a long distance race and the intensity of the outback, and you have to be able to deal with those situations. And no matter how much preparation you do back home in the States or whatever country these teams are from, uh, it's not going to be, it's not going to prepare you for what the outback has. Um, and so it's a lot of preparation ahead of time, but it's sometimes it's just quick thinking on the on the spot, trying to figure out how to get through those situations. What about aeration? I mean, it's it must be pretty hot in there for the driver, isn't it? Yeah. Well, how do you do deal with that? It's it's an intense driving experience. I like to call it. Drivers know what they're getting into. You know, it is hot. We don't have the air conditioner blowing all the time. Uh, there is some venting for the driver that for them to get some airflow. But in general, we try to keep it sealed and not have any airflow into the car. How about the tires? I heard some of the teams had difficulty with that. We also had difficulty with the tires. We're running standard moped tires um, that are available for motorcycles and mopeds. Um, they have a fairly high rolling resistance coefficient, and so they're fairly draggy, so we have a lot of loss there compared to some of um, other tires. Um, but they work really well. They're really tough. Um, but uh, I think next year we'll probably use some different tires. And uh, you've got to, what solar? OK, we asked this to you before, which is uh, your solar cells are actually silicon, right? Uh, instead of uh, gallium arsenide, That's which correct. is, I think most teams are using that, right? Yeah, and this year the rules sort of lent itself to silicon cells. Um, you know, a lot of teams have been designing six square meter cars for a long time, so it's really normal for them to go to a silicon car. Um, I like the rule change this year. It, you know, evened out the field compared to last year where the gallium cars were all at the top of the podium. Um, so I hope they keep that rule for next year, and we'll probably be rocking silicon next year as well. Fantastic. Well, thank you very much. I really appreciate right, it. How so are you going to relax tonight? Uh, I'm going to probably go out with some teams and have fun in Adelaide. Fantastic. Okay, thank you very much. Here's Susan Sign, Nanamaker, uh, signing off at uh, SignInstitutFuture.net with a team from the MIT. USA, of course.